Yeah, hello everybody. Today I had my solar panel cleaning day and so it came to my mind that I could share this with you um, what I did here over the past years. Um, as you know I buy the MG ZS EV and um, one thing where I'm very happy about is that I can charge this uh, to 100% on solar power and not everybody have the possibilities to have a big roof like this and put so many panels here up but I think we should think about uh, global warming and the effects when we have in Bangkok a lot of PM 2.5 over the year end or every year now and uh, an EV have not this pollution but uh, on the other side when you charge your EV at home and you use the power out from the plug um, you ever ask yourself where this uh, power is coming from and I mean, in, in Thailand is not a lot of renewable energy used in uh, power production out of some some people like me that try to do something different so I start uh, around five years ago to buy some solar panels this is the first set here on the side I bought this um, from China and import this by myself because in this time the panels in Thailand was quite expensive as so a one panel in Thailand was in this time 12,000 baht and so I think I can uh, get it cheaper when I import it by myself and I can tell you um, yes it is cheaper but um, I would not suggest that you try this um, because of something what is so called a uh, warranty. Warranty isn't thing. Um, I will go here a little bit to the panel. You see this panel has some cracks here and uh, it is not so that this panel is not working or the output of this panel is much lower than the other panels. It is just working fine but uh, when you contact the supplier you order only 24 panels in this case I order 24 panels you order 24 panels and the supplier will tell you yeah, you know you can get for me new panels um, free of charge this is no problem but you have to try uh, you have to pay for the transportation cost so you can think by yourself um, what you do and then he said yeah but uh, for your next order for your next order I can give you these panels for free so is meaning um, he asked you to order again from him and uh, <laughs> so if the first batch was not this uh, what you expected you will order from him again that's here the big question so you see sometimes to buy something from China can be uh, quite challenging and uh, even it is cheaper what you get for your money is the question so um, out of this experience the second set what I bought this is a little bit behind the little bit blue ones this is bar bought from from uh, Thai supplier and it's a panel from Korea um, the Korean panel is, is very good it's uh, one of the best performing panels here on the roof out of the new panels what I just mounting here some some months ago just for testing you see the the, the cable is still not um, done properly in a cable duct or in a, in a pipe but it's it's more or less also in testing because this is the latest uh, type of panels what is uh, two sides they can take the the sun from two sides so I just stay it up upright to the roof and um, the advantage of this um, mounting the advantage of this mounting is that you have the sun in the morning and in the evening you see I have so many panels and in the lunchtime you have very and very high output but in the morning you miss all the time something you have not enough output to run you know I have some small machines downstairs um, we making gloves so so in the morning also I want to have power and uh, I come with the idea to use this double side panels because they can generate from both sides and you see they have on both sides solar cells so I use this to generate in the morning and it works quite well also in the morning when the Sun coming up on this side um, it's it's really going directly up to 2000 watt uh, on these panels what is nice to see here um, when you see the panels here this is the first batch 
on, on the right side you can see the first batch of panels and on the left side you see the last batch this is this uh, two, two side panels on the right and on the left is the first bed what I bought five years ago you see that the panel is much smaller smaller and uh, it have the same output to be honest the new panel have more output than the old panel both of these panels is around 300 watt the old one was 300 watt when I bought it now it's uh, maybe 290 something like this in the maximum and um, the, the new one is 325 watt and it's even much shorter than the original or the first one I bought. So you can see that the, the quality of the panels and the efficiency of the panels change over the years. And when I'm thinking about the price, also the panel here on the, on the right side was around uh, 6,000 baht when I imported by myself. And this panel here is now for 5,000 baht. Um, just bought middle of the year last year this year so you see the efficiency going up of these panels and um, as I said buy it in Thailand is much better so but coming back to this um, EV charging um, we are able to charge the car with the 16 on 16 amp um, around uh, 8 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the evening and so, so from 10 o'clock um, until 3 o'clock I can say I can charge with this uh, MG wall charger on 32M without any problem. Um, all over you see here 77 panels what is mounted now I have three more what I <laughs> don't know where I should put it but let's see. Um, one thing also here you see on the back on the back I have panels and I also have a water connection what is uh, quite important because these panels need to be cleaned from time to time and so you have to think when you install something like this on your roof about the uh, water also that you can clean it up. This uh, 77 panels can on the paper generate uh, around 23 kW kilowatt per hour but this is an, an, an value what is uh, out from the laboratory also normal these values are counted with uh, 25 centigrees and uh, 1000 watt but uh, what I find out is that uh, the maximum I can expect now on this clean panels and also mm, during um, maybe in June some of the year uh, I can get out of this year at a maximum 16 kW what is quite a lot 16 kW in lunchtime in the morning it's going as I said already very quickly up to 2000 3000 and then all the straight up to 16 if the panels are dirty or now during the, the winter time um, you can think about uh, 10 kW out of this installation, so it's meaning um, less than 50%. So here we are under the roof now. Um, what you can see here is uh, one of the inverter, the main circuit breaker what goes to the batteries, the control computer and two battery controls here um, where you can see the actual status of the battery also the battery is around minus 500 amp hours in the morning so last night we use a little bit more power than usually normal I use per night around 2.8 uh, uh, 280 amp hours but it was a little bit more so and then here are the inverters um, this type of inverter is a so-called hybrid inverter and this uh, hybrid inverters can against the grid tie inverters they can charge a battery and uh, with the solar power and um, the advantage is that you not feed something back to the grid. I think it, in Thailand it makes no sense to feed something back to the grid as you have to 
get only the half price for this what you feed to the grid than uh, from this what you take from the grid. So um, in this case uh, it's may better to do it and, and keep it in your battery than uh, to sell it to the grid and then to rebuy it from them. I think it's not work. So what you can see here on this uh, inverters, uh, here for example is the panel. These are the, the panels from uh, Korea. They generate just now 2.5 kilowatt. And here is the, the first, this is uh, the first panels I bought. They are generated at the same time around 2 kilowatt. You see, it's uh, quite a different, and uh, when you remember, just I show you the different in the dimension of the panel. So it's, it's uh, quite amazing how much difference you can get out. Um, all over, I have six inverter. These inverters are set to three phase to give a three phase output for a parallel on phase one and uh, on phase two is each one inverter. So in principle these inverters can do around uh, 4500 watt each, also 4 kW, say just 4 kW, so it's meaning uh, 24 kW you can get out of these inverters. Now we are here at the battery room. What you're seeing here is a lead acid battery. This lead acid battery has 1300 amp hours with 48 volt. And here at the wall you see the main cabinet where the big cables go up to the inverters and the connections of the batteries itself. Here is an uh, additional charger. This charger is necessary because you have to do an equalization charge on uh, the lead acid batteries um, around one time the month. If you not do this you will lose your capacity on the lead acid batteries quite quick and they will not get the lifetime. This is a um, telecom battery, what you use normally for telecom towers and it's uh, produced in, uh, in Thailand and so I choose this. Um, the lifetime of this battery is uh, given with 15 years but uh, due to the, the usage of um, buffering, to, to all the time buffering, also on, on, the, on the day you charge it up, in the night you use the energy, um, due to the cycle deep I think you can thinking 15 years you will not reach but 10 years it's, uh, it's made possible. So then um, as this uh, battery was not enough for our usage here in the house and also then um, when you want to charge your EV then you need a little bit more than 40 kW. The EV itself had 40 kW so it will not fit. So then I uh, had this uh, lithium ion cells here and uh, some people call this uh, Tesla power wall or whatever. Uh, for me it's just a lithium ion battery. This uh, battery is 58.4 um, volt and uh, one with 1500 amp hours so it's uh, roughly around um, 80 kW battery so I could charge now <laughs> the EV two times out of uh, this battery and still have then left the 40 kW battery for the house. Um, it's a little bit too much, but <laughs> uh, maybe some people know I want to build my electric car by myself and so I purchased this uh, lithium ion batteries and after I bought the MG ZS EV uh, it was not more necessary to, to, to use these batteries and so uh, I use it for the solar system and uh, I'm, I'm quite happy because the, the, the main difference between these this two types of battery is that this uh, lead acid battery you can charge um, in maximum with 130 140 amps but uh, due to my number of panels on the roof i would be able to charge the battery with 300 amps but this is not possible i would overheat the lead acid battery so but the lithium batteries i have here in parallel 15 bet 100 amp hours batteries and uh, the charging the maximum permissible charging on this uh, lithium batteries would be 1500 amp hours uh, amps per hour 
um, but I cannot <laughs> reach this. Also I charge these batteries at maximum with 300 amp. And so you see I can fill up this, this 80 kV battery in the half time I would use for this 40 kV battery and that's, that's really a game changer. So I can now fill up every day my battery, also the, the lithium battery, I can fill up every day now and this was uh, not possible with the lead acid battery. The lead acid battery also I could fill up but I need the whole day to do this and this year the lithium battery is full after four hours. So here we're coming to the last point. This is the control software. Um, here you can see the solar system, how it works. You can see this online from every, everywhere in the world. It's set up like that. So and uh, what you see here is the actual load on the solar panels. So they generate just now around 11 kV. Um, here you can see the status of the grid. The status of the grid in my case uh, it's uh, changing from 300, uh, 230 to 0 volt all the time because I use a three phase system but I have only a single wire grid. So that's why it is uh, all the time blinking but the grid is there. So and here's what we use in the house. We use in the moment 12 point, nearly 13 kV. I just plug in the car to show that this is really possible to charge the, 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 the car from the sun. Um, a little bit I have to take out, out of the battery in this case, but this is up to the, to the sun. You can see here on the underside it was uh, quite balanced, but in the moment the sun is not so intensive, so, so it's uh, changed a little bit back to the battery, but this going up and down, as you see, it's, it's nearly, nearly zero. So, here it's an overview for 2019, so the grid I used, I used the 16 kV from the grid, but uh, totally I used 1,500, oh, not 1,500, 15,438 kV over the year. So uh, 60 kV, there was an issue with my battery, so I had to... Uh, switch off the inverter for one day and so that's uh, what I used on the grid this year. Normally it would be zero or nearly zero. Um, here's the, the month of uh, December you see also we had not no grid use in, in December and uh, until today 1220 kV was produced. The average uh, just just forget it. So that's, that's uh, what you can see here. Here you have the uh, day maximum. The day maximum today was 13,750 watt. And the maximum lows were uh, nearly 14 kV. Um, this is what is produced today and this is what is used today in summary. In summary. What is nice here, you can see here now the, the inverter cluster, what the inverter cluster generate. And you can see here the battery um, here you see the actual status of the battery and the last deep of discharge. So last night I had a discharge of nearly 1000 amp hours and I filled up until I start to charge the car around, um, around let me think one moment, around 600 amp hours I charged already the battery up but now when I switch to the AV the charging is not more possible in the moment. So that's uh, what you can see here. You can see the, the battery life, the completely battery life and the completely discharging and charging of the battery. So you see there is a discrepancy between, between charging and discharging. Um, as you know everything has an efficiency factor. So also here on the battery this uh, come here and uh, so you have the different then what you can see here is the grid. Uh, in my case, it not show you anything. The low trends. It's a little bit slowly. It's online. So the low trends uh, is uh, from the day. Here you can see yesterday or this night I, I made a charging of the car, and uh, this is then here over the day. In the morning, it's uh, going up, and the machines are running. 
So that's one day and here again I start to charge the car again. Here you see the load of the solar panels, from the solar panels. Here it's a cloud in the moment. When you have a cloud then it drops very quickly. And here's one thing what you can see what I talk uh, on the roof that these uh, vertical panels make here some bump up. You have here a curve what's going on here. Um, when in the morning the sun comes to these panels then it's going up very quickly and then it's then the other panel takes over. Here you can see the charging of the batteries, how the battery are charged. You can see the, the midpoint voltage and the, the curve of charge. This is the curve of charge of the battery and here's the midpoint voltage. The midpoint voltage is uh, quite important on um, lithium ion cells as the lithium ion cells you know you have a BMS, also my battery have a BMS and uh, that's what the BMS is working. The midpoint is exactly the, the battery is uh, taken, the battery is taken in the middle of the battery is one, one connection and you measuring the voltage and you compare the right and the left side of the battery and uh, as you have the BMS and, and not every cell is the same on a lithium ion battery so you have the all the time deviation. For my lithium ion battery, this uh, 2.4 to 2.5 percent is uh, quite quite normal during charging, and uh, it's going down during discharging to 1.1.8 1. 1. percent. So I have to take care that this is all the time between 1.8 and 2.5. It is running out of this. Uh, um, well used then um, my battery is unhealed here or there is any any problem on the battery so that's that's quite important this is this what I looking uh, try to looking every day here you can see the the inverter clusters what the, what the inverters uh, just produce here's an overview trend overview trend show you all the values and then what is the interesting thing is the reports. This is the report from, from this year. It's in months, so what we produce per month. Here you see the, 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 the huge difference in generation because um, we start with the new panels. I put the new panels to the system in September so you see then it's going up and also we use more power because also we get the electric car in September and you can see here the history over the days for one month and also you can see the history by hours and here you can see very nicely um, in this time, also in the winter time, it starts uh, around 7 o'clock that we are coming to balance and uh, at 8 o'clock we already produce more than we will use. Even when we start our machines, you see the machines is uh, running just a little bit under the, the, this what we can produce. In the summer it starts already at 5 or 6 o'clock, it starts already to have some noticeable output from the solar panels at 5 o'clock and this then running until to the evening. Yeah, that's what you can see on the control side and that's also the end. Um, so you, you see now that we are able to charge the car completely on solar and I can say I drive now around um, 7400 kilometer with the car and uh, in this time I charge outside just uh, two times. Um, we had a little bit longer tour and so during this tour we try the charging outside. It was not really necessary but uh, <laughs> um, I have the car already three months and I never charge, uh, I never try and charge her. So, so on this day we was meeting in the uh, CDC and uh, so so this was a good opportunity to try one of these charger theirs. Yeah, thank you.